uh, instead of Sina. How do you suggest finding balance between sacrificing time in this dunya and making time to build your akhirah? Uh, balancing the career and seeking knowledge. Here's the thing, right? Um, it's a very broad question because there's this idea that they're kind of mutually exclusive. Um, there's also this idea, a lot of the times I think when we see speakers on the stage and we hear so much about what they've done, we don't realize that this is years, years of work, right? Um, uh, the other thing is everybody's situation is different, right? Um, so what one person is able to do with the resources Allah has blessed them with, another person may not be able to do. They've got other talents that Allah Santa has given them. Um, also, even as an individual, right? I'm gonna ask you all a question. Raise your hand if your entire life has always been the same. Nothing's ever, ever changed in your life. Nothing, it's been just permanently the same. All right, most people are not like that, right? Um, you're, you might be single, then you're married, you might have kids, you might be working, then you're staying at home, right? People's situations change. And so we have to allow our uh, actions to kind of mold and to, to kind of go with the flow, if you will, right? Um, I'll give you a personal example. Uh, for example, when I started the Qalam Seminary in 2015, it was a one-year program. They're, they have a five-year Alamiya program now. They don't have it anymore, or they, they didn't have it at the time. Um, so I did, the, I did a year of Arabic, then I did a year of seminary. These were all full-time, I wasn't working, right? Then I realized I have to pay bills, so I should probably get myself a job and get back to work. Um, then Qalam started their five-year Alamiya program. I was like, this is amazing, I'd really like to be able to do this. But honestly, I can't afford to take five years off of work and study full-time. I just can't, it's not something I can afford to do. Um, so what I did is I joined uh, different institutions that do part-time classes that I can do online. That's around the time when I did my hiv, I did my ijazat and the qiraat, um, and so forth, right? So you have to allow yourself to find a way based on your situation. You have to be practical, right? You're, you're not going to race around, like I, I, did a, I did a master's degree in Islamic studies during COVID, and the only reason I was able to do it is because of COVID, um, where the university is in London, and they decided to offer their classes online because of COVID. I, it's been my dream to go to this university and study there. I was like, I can't afford to quit my job and move to London. And then Allah SWT <laughs> made it easy for me. And Oh, from the um, University of London, they have um, a department called SOAS. Um, so I did my master's degree from there. But it was easy because I, all I had to do was 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. I would take a class. And then I'd go, get to work. And I did that for a year, right? Um, so Allah SWT will open doors for you. Your job is to never lose touch. Do whatever you can that's practical, that fits your schedule, right? Don't, don't say, okay, I have to memorize Quran in six months. I have to master the Arabic language in three months. I have to quit my job and leave my family and move abroad. Or what works for one person doesn't work for the other person. What works for you won't work for other people and so forth, right? So I think that's what it is, is you have to prioritize. You have to be balanced, but don't lose touch, right? Um, we have so many uh, organizations and such now, alhamdulillah, that offer different courses and stuff, you'll find something that works for you. Make dua to Allah that Allah SWT will make it easy. Um, and you will find things that you can do. Also keep knocking at the door. Sometimes like if you want to study, uh, the door doesn't open. Um, and then you get frustrated. I remember uh, I was uh, taking Malki Fik with Sheikh Hamza and it was like Tahara prayer, Tahara prayer, Tahara prayer. I think I took the same book like four or five times because it was the only one that was being offered at the time in the area and I wasn't able to go abroad to study. And I, so I, I, I went, I did the worst thing ever. I went to Sheikh Hamza and complained. <laughs> and I said, Sheikh Hamza, I, you know, it's kind of like I'm doing the same book over and over again and I feel like, you know, I wish I could go. I was complaining because I w couldn't go anywhere to study and he said, you know, there are people who want to study, and there are people who want to want to study. Yeah, yeah. And he said, check your intention. Maybe you want to want to study, which means like you want to be part of that group that wants to study, but you don't actually firmly have an intention to study. And then uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we got a resident scholar from the country I wanted to study in. 
and then we got another one, and then we got another one. And so alhamdulillah, he brought that to my attention and uh, set me straight.